Recently, I was peeling an apple to make oatmeal for breakfast. And as I stood at the sink peeling that apple, suddenly through me came an enormous longing and grief about my mother. My mother, who's been dead now for 13 years, but looking down at my hand, peeling the apple, I remembered all the times as a kid I had watched her peel an apple and how she told me about the days when she and her grandmother would peel apples and try to get the whole peeling off without breaking it. And I thought that was so cool and I can never do that myself. But as I looked at myself peeling my own hand, peeling that apple, Suddenly, I began sobbing with this deep longing for my mother, this deep welling up of grief. I continued peeling the apple. There was nothing else to do. And by the time I finished peeling it, and the peel was broken, of course, I was done crying. I was telling a friend about it later, a friend who works with people who are grieving, and she told me that the phrase they use for those moments is grief surge, where you have a surge of grief that comes through. And she said, initially with the loss, they come through all the time. And then as you get further from it, they are more rare. But she said, you will have those the rest of your life. I thought about that experience this month of June as we talk about the topic of grace. Because I don't know about you, but for me, I have grace surges just like that grief surge. That is to say, I'm doing something, I'm minding my own business, and suddenly through me comes this sense, not of grief and loss, but of complete peace, of complete belonging to the earth and to all that is, a sense that I'm okay just the way I am, that I am connected to everything. And just as that grief surge then went right on by. The same happens for me with these surges of grace. I don't walk around in them for days. They come through me and they're wonderful when they do. And I can't predict them and I can't hold on to them. And yet those moments, those moments where that surge of grace happens, give me a map to follow, to know that I am beloved on the earth. Even though I can't hold on to them, I know that I've had those moments of grace. I have a lot of them in the garden, and that's why I love the garden so much. And any spiritual practice that we have, we have in part because we believe we are more likely to have that feeling of connection, of belonging, of oneness. Whatever our spiritual practice is, if it's journaling, if it's meditation, if it's gardening, whatever it is, Part of it is that we open ourselves. We create a setting for grace to come. And of course, creating a setting doesn't make it happen. I plant pollinator plants in my yard so that butterflies will come. But whether the butterflies do in fact come is not something that I can control. I can only set the place. And so it is with grace. We open ourselves and we create environments where we hope that grace will surge through us, will visit us, and we know that we are not in control of it. Grace, those moments of acceptance, those moments when we know everything is okay. In this culture that we live in, that sense of being okay no matter what has been replaced with this sense that we can buy our way to happiness if we attain enough, if we do enough, if we make enough, if we consume enough, then we'll feel that sense of acceptance and belonging. But the irony of that is the more we do, the more we consume, the more we need to consume, the more we think we need to consume, the more we think we need to do, grace is about being. It is not about doing. If you look at babies, when they are happy, they are in a complete and utter state of grace. And they, when they're sad, they are in a complete and utter state of wailing and longing. Wherever they are, they are completely there. For the rest of us, we're not as 
able to give ourselves 100% to the moment, and that's probably a good thing, or there would be a lot of temper tantrums going on all the time in work settings and on buses. So it's probably good that we learn to mute our feelings and hold back. But if we do that too much, we're not going to be able to receive this wonderful gift that's there for us. So in this month of June, my wish for you is that you open the door and invite grace in, however grace comes to you, and that you share those moments with us so that we can vicariously know that mystery is alive and love is afoot. Happy June.